what I enjoy most about my job is the opportunity to introduce a new strategy to our clients. And the reason like, yes, we are entering new technology, but ultimately we're introducing that technology in a manner in which I'm optimistic they will continue to adopt, evolve, and support um, as their business transforms and as they continue to grow in a like sustainable, scalable manner, right? Mm -hmm. And that is what I like, that digital transformation that everybody is talking about right now is overwhelming, right? Mm -hmm. And where and do we even evolving begin with so that? fast? Exactly. Right. And so where do we even begin with that? And so that is my favorite part um, about working with my clients is that I get to be a sliver of that introduction. And so I'm I think when it comes to Jack Chat GPT, I'm excited for the opportunity for that to be palatable and expandable to clients of all sizes, industries, and so on. So I think. I'm excited that this feels like a glimpse into the reality of what AI is capable of. And it doesn't matter if you use it to Google a question or if you and get a thoughtful reply that you can, you know, take with you as a as a great talking point to your next conversation, or if you're utilizing it to to your point to book hotels and flights for you. Um, it is a tool that gives everybody the same baseline knowledge in a consumable manner, right? And it's the first tool out there to be able to do so in a way that is user-friendly, right? Mm -hmm. And really kind of fun, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, I think I, I'm just excited about the opportunity that it's it's palatable and it's something that I think everyone can adopt in some way, shape, or form, yeah. however drastic that is. It's to kind of comment on what you just brought up. You know, when you see your clients starting to implement these technologies, you're also starting to see the evolution of how other people are going to use it, which makes us totally. a little bit more informed, it grabs some new ideas of how we might improve upon how we're using it in the future. And I do find that to be super exciting. There are some worries though, right? Like any technology, you don't want to just blindly use it. Um, you know, I think ChatGPT has its own characteristics that we need to be careful of, uh, making sure that it's not hallucinating responses and that the information it provides is actually factual. Yeah. I think that it often struggles sometimes with citing where it pulled information from. Obviously, the training requirements of information prior to 20 or after 2021 is somewhat spotty because it hasn't been trained on it yet. Sure. But in a larger context, what worries you about the technology as we move forward into the future? I think what worries me um, is that people find it frightening, mm -hmm. right? Um, to your point, obviously, with any new piece of technology or any tool, there's a level of, um, you know, scrutiny that has to go into insanity checking. Like, it, it, you know, is this valid? Am I using this in the best manner? Um, and I think as more sophisticated forms of AI continue to evolve and, um, you know, go live, there is an opportunity for us, that scrutiny window to be less and less. Um, and that's not to say that that's a bad thing per se, but I think that's what is maybe worrisome is like, does our tolerance, like how does our tolerance change as more sophisticated forms of, of AI um, deploy? And what does that look like as it relates to how people work, right? So, I think that's everybody's what everybody is is worried about. Right. And so if I can summarize that a little bit, and correct me if I'm wrong here, it sounded like as technologies like artificial intelligence, chat GPT, the GPT models become more prevalent in society, they become more readily accessible and accepted 
And because they become more accepted, the scrutiny on the technology becomes less and less. And so maintaining yeah. that due diligence of assessing the information that's provided back is still on humans. Absolutely. And unfortunately, as it becomes more commonplace, we tend to subside our discretion at that time. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, look at the evolution of like smartphones, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Now everybody's got one. Um, yep. And you use it the same, like you use it very differently than probably how people did like, you know, 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. And so I think, yes, there is that aspect. That's what like worries me personally is that there's still that human level of scrutiny or due diligence to your point that is still being done. I think the other thing that worries me is that people think like there's going to be robots and AI like running the world. Like that's not like I am not in that camp. Like there is always going to be um, a level of human strategy that at this point in time is not something that is achievable through AI, right? Like even these these conversations, these dialogues, um, you know, thought processing and ideation like those like that's not something that I see uh AI replacing personally and so I interact with a ton of clients who are even you know skeptical or afraid of very basic forms of automation like robotic process automation um you know their their security from a job perspective um from an organizational perspective feels it can feel threatening, right? Mm -hmm. And um, I don't think that's uncommon, but I think that's a massive role that you and I play in this is, is making sure that uh, both that we educate, um, you know, other organizations on, on the actual benefits, right? Um, you know, my goals, especially when we think about um, AI and automation and how our clients are deploying that is always to ensure that we're doing so in a scalable and sustainable way, but also that in a way that is going to benefit the individual who is currently having to do it. 